it's been a bit of a mystic journey for me over the last three days, uh, as it always is and has been for many years. This I this this uh, gentle gentle monitoring, self monitoring of thoughts that can lead down dark alleyways and ideas and doubts and fears and uh, attempts to control paranoia and neuroses and mourning over past sorrows. Um, all of those things are are um, can be persistent elements that uh, that hem hem ourselves in, hem hem myself in. And I think I've taken a lot of steps gently and carefully because it's not been easy to try and not define myself by the past, but to create a vision of my future, a vision of potential, to trust and to believe in it that um, that I or we as creatives are deserving of a happy, fulfilled, potentialized and um and a, and a deep aware existence where we are centered where we're open not afraid to share not afraid to be loved and to love and not succumb to notions of uh, self-protection and these are all uh, different aspects of uh, of the mind the emotions uh that can prove to be troublesome and i think i've had my fair share of that and i think lately i've been more successful in this gentle um observing of where my emotions are going where fears are going and where my mind and what my mind is doing and not doing um i don't pretend to find what the mystic life is or what mysticism is um but I think the the, th the key thing is that what can imagination do for ourselves? And surely it has to be more than beginning our day in the creative field that is our passion and then judging the work as it goes on and wondering how it's going and who's, how it's going to be received. And um, so can we do more and can we define our lives by embracing our full potential rather than defining ourselves by the past or what's happened to us yesterday or the way we were spoken to or the way we might have been abused or the way in which um, our work has been received or words, our thoughts, um, our performance. And does this, uh, this exciting prospect of the quantum universe and the quantum field does it actually have a place in our imagination and i think um if now classical science is uh, quite reticent to embrace what creatives can embrace and a uh, full shout out to samantha who gave a fantastic talk on this in the previous hour to this one um Quantum consciousness is a group of ideas which propose that classical mechanics alone can't explain consciousness and that um, instead the quantum mechanical phenomena such as entanglement and superposition and all these other wonderful things can control the function and can explain critical aspects of consciousness now that's all well and good and i don't like to complicate things let's just say that we can so believe in our creativity that it can become limitless and you say well hang on we are surrounded by limits limit our limits in our physicality limits in our well-being our health our stamina limits to our imagination how can this be limitless I think uh, during some of the the deeper creative things that I've I've been doing the last six months, I find creativity highly meditative and a highly uh, intensely healing. 
and that uh, occasionally I'll have, I will have visions and um, the sky opened up for me. Um, sometimes I do meditating before I create and in the meditation, the sky opened up and um, I saw in front of me on the horizon, vast yellow concrete letters, the high as a skyscraper that said lack. And I found in front of me one of those old dyna dynamite uh, plungers. And I pressed it down real quick. And the these huge yellow concrete letters, skyscraper letters, blew up and tumbled to the ground in a pile of dust to reveal an astonishing, beautiful sunrise. And um, on another occasion, I was um, meditating and thinking about um, about my life and what what I was doing, what the way things were going. And suddenly in front of me was a white cloud. And out of this white cloud, a hand came and handed me a huge chalice. I took it out of this hand and put it into inside my, inside my chest. And it disappeared. What is going on with consciousness when visions come? And the visions don't necessarily to take place during meditation because we know, and I talked about this uh, yesterday, during creative creative periods, of t you withdraw from the world into your singularity. You forget your name, you forget the time, you forget who you know, where, what you were doing previously, and you enter a kind of meditate, a deeply meditative state that if prolonged, usually brain function in waking consciousness is very jagged. It's an extremely jagged and jumpy um, waveform. As the person settles down into creativity, which is akin to meditation, that, that intense waveform begins to even out into classical sine wave with a different pitch. And the more you begin to meditate, the more you begin to create in that silent place, or the waveform evens out to a very gentle wave pattern. And that is when there is brain and heart coherence. And in that state, the body is flooded with immune system enhancement. The wonderful the wonderful chemical assortment that floods the system when we are in brain and heart coherence as we meditate. I touched briefly on this yesterday that it was through, I found anecdotally after consultancy ended that uh, a long, long periods of highly detailed drawing um, my heart of uh, arrhythmia. Or uneven heartbeat. It was so severe. It was um. It was, it was an awful, awful period of time, six to nine months, and it went away when I when I settled down into detailed drawing, uh, extended periods of time, and um, the the consultant said I'd found a clinical cure because she was very surprised that it had gone away, and I only sort of admitted the only thing that changed it was the fact that I had actually done some drawing for once when I hadn't for years. Um, if I could pin that to uh, studies that have been made with placebo and uh, and uh, prescription drugs. Um, so there's been test cases for decades now, and it's been repeated and repeated and repeated that um, a new medication heals the ailment of group A, Group B are given a placebo and they are healed. Now, quant the neuroscience is, is, is doing repeated analysis of this and they work really hard. Think it's probably one of the most exciting scientific endeavors that we face. And we're really waiting on um, more, more mainstream science and accepting some of the amazing things that neuroscience is, is doing through its analysis. What is what does this mean when people can heal themselves with nothing more than um, 
a sugar tablet or something when they they actually believe that they're taking something that's much more healthful much more you know that's a successful thing that we heal ourselves through thinking we heal ourselves through creativity we heal ourselves through the way we relate to the world if we're centered in a trusting open and beautiful human and humane way gregarious heart on the sleeve stuff i am uh, i am here for you unconditionally does these do, do these feelings do these approaches to life create a, a a sort of personal heaven on earth where fear disappears can therefore can our consciousness so develop that it becomes limitless that we as we settle down into our creativity enter heart brain coherence and when we are sufficiently at peace with ourselves are we in a position to affirm limitless creativity are we ready to believe that are we ready ready to surrender to the idea that we are limitless beings that we can self-heal and having self-healed, heal others. Is it possible to charge the creativity that we do? Say, is it possible for me to, to so charge my drawing and painting with this loving vitality that when you experience it in a gallery setting, it resonates towards you, this unconditional love, this intense mutually can therefore heal an observer who is in a set who is in a state of being that is calm and receptive as uh, as gallery as galleries can be they're often um, as quiet as churches um and in that receptive state we calm down when we go into a gallery if we don't start yawning we are nonetheless um settling down the heart brain coherence kicks in and in front of a painting can it resonate with you such that it can affect your consciousness we can bring intention benevolent intention to all that we do and this this question of intention is critical i think we often act act habitually even if we have a personal rule on our desk uh, before we touch a, you know, the graphics tablet or the music sheets or the piano or the easel or the palette of oil paint. We have rituals that can get us into the mood. And we, if we harness our intention with this, that I am now going to enter, I'm now going to elevate my consciousness as I settle down to the creative act. And in elevating my consciousness, I am entering a different state of being. And an inspiration can be therefore constant and spontaneous. One can trust this process so intently and willfully that spontaneous creativity and inspiration flows through us. And it's no longer me, Gordon, or whomsoever that's doing who's the technician the conduit the go-between between worlds let's say um i've often presented about um, the tribal shaman and isolated areas the deep cave the high mountains um the desolation the desolation desolate plain in and enter a state of non-being to commune with the ancestors, the gods, the uh, the great animal, the, tr the primeval animals. And in that place, they were no longer, they cut the umbilical cord to the tribe. 
in this in, and i would i would argue the same way we could intentionally do that when we enter the creative world that is our own unique and personal one we cut the ties with our environment and with our with our fellow human beings we create we become the conduit for this process of ultimate creativity that the inspiration flows through us and we sort of holy grail that is the flower of our intention and that 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 knowing akin to the shaman returns with the wisdom the received wisdom transcendent consciousness to which they added themselves and out of the studio we go with this brainstorming idea these words this music this new dance choreography this digital this art this artfulness of life we return to the world we renew our connections we become connected in the wonderful world of connectivity and release this energy that we've created share it instantly and i remember what it was like oh goodness 20 years ago when you had when you submitted art to a gallery you had to take it there and leave it to be looked at and that and uh you 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 updated you rather told to take told to take it away or you go into the show now um everything's oversubscribed that's how wonderful human beings are now instantly share capture and share what they're doing this is we in in what two decades we now we now reach a place where instantaneously an, a piece of creativity can go around the world in 12 in less than 12 hours seen by more people than it could ever have been seen before in a gallery wall 20 years ago this is a new universe of our creating we are already evolving our consciousness sensitizing it sensitizing ourselves and our mutuality um what is virtual to us? What is it doing to our consciousness that we can so put on, we can now put on a voter and enter a magical realm so disconnected with the real solid world? Yeah. It is, it's reality. We are affecting our consciousness in the ways in which we create things. 3D printing, what will we be doing next? Because things are rushing forward at an immense rate. Inspiration is, uh, is already limitless. When fine minds and refined human beings, not special, just different, have so managed to just harmonize their frequency and become so inspired, and this is what we're doing. Our consciousness is developing. It is already limitless. We just need to infirm, affirm it intentionally. We are adventurers in a very, very new universe. We're just down to five and minutes. Power sorry. to us all, I think. <laughs> I know, right? So, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was, uh, I wasn't even watching the clock there. No, no, it's, it's fantastic. So, um, uh, be, everybody um, was getting into it. So, yeah, we're just down to the last five minutes. So. Um, yeah, up to you how we how we proceed. Well, uh, if there's any questions, it'd be awesome. Uh, mm. Hopefully, we can get a few in. Saw I saw a question earlier on from uh, Will. Thanks, yeah. Will. Um, I missed I missed it. Will, yes. yeah, no, I, I put it in the in the comments. Um, I, I was just and apologies. I'm just coming off giving a talk myself, so I didn't hear um, the the very uh, initial part of your um your, your speaking but i'm I'm fascinated by this idea i was wondering how long you've been practicing this this sort of um approach of creating a ritual that takes you into this space of for lack of a better word of, of unconditional love that that then is i guess imbued in your work um and then hopefully is resonates with people on the on the other side when it's when it's you know in a gallery or when it's viewed 
I'm just kind I would of say that, with this idea. Um, it, I think th things are really spe speeding up in that regard mm -hmm. for, for me. In the past, I, I've always had an idea about this, an intention of this going back 10, 20 years. It's happening now so, so quickly in the last three years, really, as I'm beginning to actually settle down to, to become a happier person mm. and to um, make an end to the war with my past and with myself. And as, a, as that, as mm. a lot, a lot has changed. Um, so yeah, it, it's relatively recent. Um, and uh, being a little, being a bit of maverick. I mean, I, I, I'd love to exhibit more, but often I find uh, what's happening in the studio is so healing that I get caught up in that, and the weeks fly by. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> but certainly, the, um, and I've, I've also acknowledged for a long time that the work, I, the work, the work, the things that I do, are for me first, um, not in a selfish way, but they're here. That's here to teach me. Yeah, and if if it goes further for other people, then I'm overjoyed about that. Um, it, it's it's completing a circle actually. In the same way that I sort of glossed over this idea of the shaman goes to an extremely lonely place, mm -hmm. receive, receive something and profoundly inspiring that's difficult to communicate, returns, and the tribe is quickly engaged with it and it elevates everybody's consciousness. Yeah. And um, I do think there's some value to completing that circle. Hmm. Absolutely right. Yeah. Um so I I, I uh, <laughs> in some ways words fail because um mm -hmm. life is so intense and bizarre and surreal and beautiful that um that that vocally sharing it is not something I do a great deal of. I I, I completely and, um, hear, I completely hear you and agree with you about that. There, words do fail in this realm, but I do hear you. Mm -hmm. I do hear what you're what you're pointing at. Thanks, Will. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very so, it's very profound. Thanks. Anybody else want a quick question? Otherwise, but we are the, the fine art panel straight after this, isn't there? Well, we've got about half an hour, so let's let's. Oh wow! While Maxim's got himself muted, let's break the rule a little bit, just a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> let's... Oh, break the rules, eh? Absolutely no. So, uh, Gordon, if we if we look to. I was just fascinated by what you were saying um, with regard to your health coming into balance by the meditation of of your work. Um, it, you know, is this the first time? Have you repeated it since? Uh, you know, have other people taken it away? Um, um, I'm trying to think. I mean, I, I, um. Uh, portraiture portraiture is quite a, a large part of my work um or a fair part of my work in relation to landscapes or or more subjective figurative work so port classical portraiture and often um uh i find when i uh, when when i'm draw when i'm drawing or painting a, a sitter i also like to um bring a host of objects that are deeply personal to that that individual and have that somehow arrayed to uh, surround them, because actually the, con the their personality is 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 often more in the objects, the personal objects, than their face. Although having said that, for me the eyes is are always the first place that I start and the place in which I linger most in their drawing. Body. Always the eyes, always the eyes, um, and I think this this is. Um, an intuitive idea that somehow in the eyes you begin to embody the individual um, and to try and test this for, for myself I started to draw and paint um, uh, sort of esoteric people who are dead from the, for 100, from 100 years ago 
to see what would happen and having focused on the eyes repeatedly um sometimes step back from the work and find i was so shocked by what i was seeing that i that it as if it appeared to me that the drawing had become a doorway to another dimension and um as if as if some someone else was staring at me through the back through the drawing through the painting and this was a really this was this was a quite intense experience but one which i repeated on a on a series of drawings um my wife is a spirit medium and she's always intensely intensely sensitive and um she didn't usually come, doesn't usually come into the studio until I tell her near near completion of a of a picture, and uh, on every occasion she'd come in when I was completing the the artwork the portrait of an esoteric person from you know hundred two hundred years ago, and she burst into tears, you know not, not you know like so she, oh, she, and it was a, she would gasp and. Um, with this sense of uh, of um, that I wasn't necessarily one wasn't necessarily seeing, um, I trust her implicitly, and this is this is sort of like repeated for me enough to hint that something's happening. There, and I think art. Our, our imagination can open doorways to other dimensions. And that's what's as if we don't already do that with virtual reality. That's a that's a, a thing that's so that's affecting our consciousness. It's as good as entering another dimension, another realm. We do this a lot, and the, our inventions are exploring these ideas. Um and uh, there's wonderful lines from one movies. Take uh, a Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull when he asks his friend, where have they gone? And he says glibly, in the space between worlds or or something. And um, I often think, certainly think that, that in all creativity, people touch truth. Such that it's, it's disarmingly commonplace and it's in theater film music pictures you know um there's one that's again one that springs to mind uh it's a, it's a song called noah by uh composed by joe raposo we will walk with the lions fly with the eagles sing with the nightingales and live in love and peace. What on earth was Joe thinking when he composed these lines? Because in those simple words, I mean, that song's got to be 40 plus years old, 50 years old, is, is a sort of wish for humanity. And it's as bright and hopeful and optimistic for us today. What is it? That we deal with ourselves and can we create that through all the virtuosity at our disposal? Um, it's it will be creative people who heal the world, who bring about world peace, who elevate enough consciousness through what they're doing and the sharing thereof, that we slowly but surely turn the tide of turbulence and really get to a place that we deserve to be in, that we are, um, as if it were, attend our collective coronation. Um, as I said, my wife's a spirit medium and uh, different beings have come through her and had conversations with me in this one chap. This one person being thing um, was talking very quietly to me and said, curiously, why have you not put the crown on your head yet? What are you waiting for? It's always there. You have it. Why have you not 
extended your inclination. Why have we not fully affirmed ourselves so passionately that we can unlock limitless potential and through the contact with others, like a live wire, transmit it and walk. Absolutely. Yeah, Gary, this is it. We we are yeah. so busy thinking that we are in heavy, fleshy, saturated with sense environment. It's not surprised that empirically, observationally, this scene, this is all that there is. I'm not surprised people believe that. But when you are in that beautiful creative place of peace, perception is elevated and the world is no longer as fixed and as solid as it is, as, it, as we're used to it being. Mm. 